Hazel. Lots of stuff going on in Hazel, lots of minor stuff, lots of major stuff, not quite ready to reveal some of the major stuff, but there is a lot of minor stuff. And by minor, I don't mean stuff that we don't really care about, I just mean not massive new systems that bring something entirely new to Hazel, but rather really important and really valued improvements. Hazel is constantly in development and this is a little look at some of the stuff the team has been up to. All right, so taking a look at what we have in Hazel, in the sandbox project that ships with the engine, this is the default scene, it's called animation test as you can see over here. This is just a nice simple scene that showcases a lot of Hazel's systems. If you're trying to play around with the engine and you're not sure where to start, then take a look at this scene. And again, it should be the first thing that you see when you start Hazel because it's part of the sandbox project. Now, let me just hit play and we can sort of explore this scene and see what it has to offer. We just have this WASD controls for our character here. We can move around with the mouse. We can sprint with shift. If we walk up to this gun, we can pick it up. Jim put the scene together, by the way, who is our animation person. And then if I sprint over here and pick up this ammo, then I should be able to aim with the right mouse button somewhere. And then if I click, I'm gonna play a sound and fire these like, this is like a Nerf gun, so we'll fire like these pellets. And that's basically it. That's this scene, as far as I'm aware. I mean, again, Jim made it, so maybe I'm missing something. Oh, look, here's a target. Let's sort of run up to it. Can we walk and aim? We sure can. Let me just aim over here. And there we go, we're hitting the target. There we go, right in the middle. Oh, I'm out of ammo. If we have a look at some of the systems I was talking about, um, on this play and night, we have an animation graph. So if you're trying to learn how to do animations in Hazel and see kind of how that system's going, then this of course is an example of that. We've got like this state machine, all these different states over here. That's pretty straightforward. I think we were also playing like sounds. So there's some, yeah, Nerf gun shoot is an example of an audio graph of a sound graph. So we have this input action over here. We've got all of these different sounds in this array. These are just different sound effects. So the sound isn't the same every time we fire. So that's an example of our audio system. We've got these interactable interact zones set up, I think as a rigid body with a sphere collider in this case, that'll all be triggered through C Sharp if we open the Visual Studio solution. We can take a look at some of the code that's running behind this. Anyway, this is just a little taste of what you can expect from our latest dev branch. So if you do have access to Hazel through Patreon, then you can, this is where we're at today. Now, all of this is a lot of work and you can really only manage to achieve this within a reasonable time frame if you manage your time well. If you're not so good at that or you wanna improve, then I highly recommend you check out Akaflow sponsor of this video. Akaflow is a really well-made productivity and time management app built to help busy people make the most out of their time. All you have to do is just jot down whatever you need to get done and it goes straight into your inbox. This is great because I don't really need to think about when to do it, I just need to get it down so I don't forget it. And this is made even easier with Akaflow's command bar, which is one of my favorite features. Anywhere on your computer, you just press a global shortcut, you open this bar and you type in whatever it is that you want to get done. And if you're ready to schedule it, you can include when you'd like to get it done. And to speed things up, even more, Akaflow's AI can automatically categorize your tasks for you. And this AI feature is honestly really cool. Like check this out, Mo Lawn. It knows I'm talking about the house. Plan videos, YouTube, sprint meeting, Hazel. How does it know? Akaflow has a ton of different integrations like Gmail, Slack, GitHub, Jira. Almost anything you're using can be integrated to automatically add tasks. A lot of time management and productivity comes down to your mental state and how you're able to mentally process everything, which is why I really like rituals. Akaflow's rituals let you reflect on how your day went and plan the next day with daily plannings and daily shutdowns. Akaflow has some really great documentation that goes much more in depth about all of these features. Check out Akaflow today using my link in the description below and you can even get an exclusive one-on-one -on -one onboarding call. Someone from Akaflow will help you take control of your time. Huge thank you to Akaflow for sponsoring this video. Now, let me talk about some of the new features that the team has been working on, namely our new volunteers who have joined the team. One of our goals for this year was to expand the team. And I think last devlog, I put out an application where people could apply to be volunteers on the Hazel core team. We received over 130 applications. So thank you to everyone who applied. We have at this point, onboarded a bunch of people and we're still kind of going through interviewing some of them. If you are interested, if you've got the time, if you think you could help out, I'll leave a link to the application in the description below. If you've already applied, feel free to apply again. This is just kind of like a running application. We have a spreadsheet and everything, so that's totally fine. So Alexander, one of the new volunteers has done a few different things. You may have noticed that first of all, the camera actually has like a frustum here made out of lines. So that is new. We didn't used to have that. Furthermore, if we click on the camera, yes, we can click on the camera 
camera now. So before you weren't able to select these sprites, you could only pick 3D objects in the scene like I'm doing right now. Now you can actually select icons. So if we had, for example, a point light over here, here's a point light, I can click on the icon now revolutionary. I don't know why we didn't have this feature, but this is, these are just all the little things that are not that difficult to add, but you still have to go and add them. And that's where a lot of the new volunteers, the fresh blood, they can really help out. And that's really, really appreciated. Now, speaking of the camera though, let me delete the slide. Speaking of the camera though, you also may have noticed that we have this new preview over here, this picture in picture view. So this is pretty cool because we, again, didn't have this before and we didn't have this frost time before, which again is crazy, but it basically meant that you'd have really no way of positioning your camera. In fact, what I used to do is hit play. Now I've kind of messed up the camera, but I used to hit play and then find the camera over here and then kind of adjust it using the controls during the runtime. At the moment, the script's resetting it. So it's kind of impossible. You probably have to like pause it and then go in and now you can like move the camera, rotate it around, which is obviously crazy. And now you can just click on it. You can see exactly what it's going to look like over here. We can move around. The frustum obviously helps a lot as well. So yeah, this is really cool. The other thing that Alexander did was revive our whole viewports situation. So we used to have multiple viewports in Hazel. I added that just on a whim like a few years ago. Didn't really support it, didn't really finish it. He took that, made it good. So now we can spawn all of these different viewports. So let me just open up all four as an example. So here's number four, here's number three. So we have all of these different viewports that are completely independent. You can move around in them independently. They also have their own scene renderer. So you can, for example, let's show bounding boxes for all entities. We can do that over here. In this one down here, we can show physics colliders for everything. We can keep this one over here clean. Anyway, you get the point. We can also just take them off and put them onto another monitor. So it's on my other monitor now because of course, Hazel supports multiple viewports using IM GUI. So yeah, we can tear out these windows, have them wherever we like, which is pretty awesome. So a huge thank you to Alex for all of his wonderful work. And he's not done yet. He's actually working on a pretty big new feature, which we will hopefully showcase soon. Another thing that's slightly different in this scene is actually how it's rendered. So this used to be basically just like these tiles. I don't, don't remember how big they used to be, but they used to be individual entities with like static meshes that obviously when it comes down to rendering, they would be instanced, but they were still like separate entities because that was really the only way to sort of create this world. But now if you have a look at how it works, we just have this floor entity which has tiles and tiles is an entity which has the tile renderer component, which is something that I introduced around a year ago when I was working on Genesis 3D. This just allows you to have a mesh. So we have this plain mesh with a material and then you can kind of set, I guess, how many instances of it you want. And you can see it sort of creates like this tile map. It's probably more or less rendered in the same way as it used to be, because if you have the same mesh, but 20 different entities using it, for example, it will end up being a single draw call with 20 instances because Hazel's renderer will take care of that. But obviously in this case, it's a lot easier to create one entity, lay it out, and you also don't have that overhead of having so many entities for no reason. So that's pretty cool. Something that Emily has been working on for a little while is the much needed undo system. So I can move this object, control Z, ta-da, and we can even control Y to sort of put it back. It's pretty cool having, you know, this functionality. There's still a bunch of work needed to make it work, like with moving entities around, creating, deleting entities, actual properties of components as well. Like if I wanna change the camera's fov and then hit control Z, that's not gonna do anything, but it's a start and it's nice to even have something like that that you can just undo simple changes. And finally, the way that our audio system is set up behind the scenes has changed a little bit because Jay's gone ahead and taken out the specialization library that he wrote that Hazel has been using. So it's now public on GitHub. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And this is now used as a sub module inside Hazel. You can see that it's used as a sound specialization solution in Hazel engine. Anyway, that is a quick rundown of all the new things that have been happening with Hazel. It's been a while since the last update. So I just felt like I should make a little video and just provide you all with an update as to what's going on. There are some other things that have been happening behind the scenes and some larger sort of features that are almost done or planned, but it's really nice to see that Hazel is continually being developed. We have an amazing team of volunteers. As I mentioned, if you are interested in volunteering on the Hazel team and you have the time and experience to do so, you think you'd be a good fit, then apply using the form in the description below. Patreon.com slash the channel is how you can get access to Hazel and support the project. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.